Council of Europe. Would you start us, please? Certainly. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Did uh, anybody have a chance to take a look at the uh, minutes from uh, January the 22nd? Make a motion we approve the minutes. Goodman has made a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second. And I guess move to second. Those in favor? And it's unanimous. Thank you. And then the Board of Public Works is taking the minutes for uh, January 3rd, 17th, and 31st to provide it for you for information only. Okay. Um, I'm going uh, we're going to jockey things around a little bit here because we have a special visitor tonight who wants to speak and uh, he's going to do it with uh, Randy. Randy, would you step up and give your committee report and then we'll have Mr. Heidi join you after you're done to give an update on uh, the 4th Street project. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we've been awarded $633,600 in Federal Highway Administration Construction and Construction Inspection Funds for the Federal Fiscal Year 2024 for ADA ramp and sidewalk upgrades. Uh, we're having an early coordination meeting with uh, the District <coughs> Program Director in Laporte Indot on March 4th to get it started. Um, then I've been working on uh, restrooms there, converting them to brick gradium to ADA. We finished standards. ADA. Yeah, used to standards. We finished uh, moving partitions in the men's today. And then I've also been helping the street department. I've been plowing snow in the city parking lots whenever we get called out. Also, we have. Uh, about four more lights to replace in the city and then we should be done with the LED upgrade. Uh, that's all I got. That's a total of what, roughly 560 60. lights. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Uh, thank you Randy. Uh, David, would you want to step up? David Heidi's here tonight from ENB and uh, want to thank you for coming in tonight. You're supposed to be in Indianapolis, right? I will be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just want to, I caution you, want to caution you on speeding, okay? <laughs> but thanks, David. Uh, would you want to give us an update on the 4th Street, Ohio Street project? Yeah, I, as I think most of you know, I, or the Ohio Street <clears throat> the section got started last year. I, there was some delay getting started for uh, some things that uh, need to be done with Range Board. Uh, once we got uh, started, our subcontractors that did the underground uh, didn't get off to a good start. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, question about that, uh, which got us in a position uh, with that. We got into some uh, additional dewatering issues. I uh, had to do uh, everything that we could find when we put a Shovel on the ground last year, we, we found it. It didn't go that smoothly. Uh, once we got up close to 4th Street, uh, the, uh, there was a problem with the utility relocates. Uh, so we had a, a delay. Uh, thanks to, to the mayor, I uh, actually went down to Kokomo himself and got that expedited a little bit over what it would have been. You probably saw the poles finally got moved uh, just last week. Uh, there was some question why sidewalks didn't get tied all the way up to 4th Street last fall. It was because the utility poles were in the way. Uh, with, without uh, those being moved, the curb radiuses could not be put into place. So part of the paving couldn't be done, uh, all tied back. So uh, there was additional right of way that the city had to uh, acquired to help keep the project moving that uh, created a change in, in pipe and a change in some of the design uh, that cut across uh, there on the uh, would be the southwest corner 
of uh, Ohio and Fourth Street, uh, which uh, cut across that uh, that property more that created that. That was done. Uh, my recollection would be mid to late November. Uh, obviously, you don't do a whole lot of dirt work at that time in Indiana. Uh, but the big push that we had going on at that time was try to keep things going so we had all the underground done uh, prior to close for winter. So uh, we kept it going as long as we could. We, we held the asphalt plants open uh, so that we could uh, at least get the asphalt in place. I think we did that maybe the week of Christmas. Um, so we, we finally got that secured at that time. And of course, at that time, uh, freeze sat in and, and we were done. Uh, we started uh, back, uh, our subcontractors started removing sidewalk uh, this week. We've been down there the north side. Uh, the sidewalk is being removed. So uh, weather permitting, uh, that sidewalk is going, to be going back in. Uh, from there, uh, as you start again in the spring, obviously, uh, contention again. But the, the focus will be we do the north side curve. Uh, and then uh, and we're, we're working on looking at different ideas to expedite the project overall. We submitted a, a proposal to Donahue, the design firm. Uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, they were not receptive to, to that plan. So we have come up with some alternative plans and, and we've talked uh, with Donahue about sitting down and seeing what we can do to come up with uh, different ideas to expedite what we can and still give the, the city the job that they, they paid for. <coughs> I apologize for the, the state that that project is in. It was certainly never the intent that it would uh, have gone the way it did. Uh, we, uh, we are the local contractor, although uh, we really didn't do anything on that project last year until we patched the asphalt in December. Uh, but it's our project, uh, you know, we own it. Uh, it, were, it was our subcontractors out there working and, and clearly uh, it hasn't gone the way that anyone would hope and for that uh, I apologize. I do want to thank uh, Randy and, and Derek and, and the mayor and everyone that was out there helping expedite where we could. Uh, we appreciate that and uh, all I can say is we, we are working everything we can to diligent, diligently move the project forward and make sure we do everything this spring that we can uh, for the ease of the traveling public to get that done sooner rather than later. David, I thank you very much for wanting to come and speak tonight and uh, I've got to explain to everybody David's motivation was your article Wes <laughs> it got all of our attention and rightfully so I mean the, the, this has not gone the way that we had anticipated by any means and we did lose some time and now we're trying to make up that time and if I were a homeowner over there, I would be frustrated. I've talked to some of them over there during the project phase, and they've been very, very cooperative and very patient. Uh, Mr. Graham, uh, I agree with everything he said to you in the paper, Wes, his quotes. I disagree with one thing, or I want to clarify one thing. His quote was, I don't know whether to point a finger at the mayor or the contractors. I want to make it perfectly clear. I'm the guy who takes the responsibility. When you are put into this chair, it goes with it. Uh, David's been very gracious tonight, but I'm the guy who takes the responsibility for what happens out there. You can't, uh, you can't always stand in the limelight taking bow for the things that are good without having to expect that you have to stand up and take what comes with the bad. Well, this is the bad. Now, the good part is we're going to make this right just as soon as weather permits. Right, David? That's certainly our goal. That and is correct. Wes, I want you to come back and take another picture for me. And in the wall of pride that out there, we're going to have before and after. Okay? Wes, I'd like to invite you in May. <laughs> Where to? <laughs> come before that. Well, you know, and, and David is, they are the hometown company. 
and the one thing you know we, we were talked about when this project started off with thank God we got a hometown company that's uh, behind this because it's right there in EMB's backyard it's going to be the model for, for them to show customers and such that come to see them so we'll get it right I thank you David I know you really wanted to talk tonight and you interrupted a meeting and well, I, I appreciate, I appreciate the opportunity I want everyone to know that EMB will do everything we can to expedite that project anybody have any questions for David Mason, you don't have any questions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And, uh, oh, you do have a question? Have a question? Sorry. Uh, I was just wondering um, if May was the um, expected time. To I would anticipate the weather to be better by May. Okay. Uh, I would anticipate less mud in May. Now, obviously, this time of year when you have frost a few inches down below the surface, uh, water can't go anywhere. This is the time of year that you have the freeze thaw. Uh, so you're, you know, if the farmers aren't in the fields, we can't do much with dirt. You know, we all get in the dirt, play in the dirt about the same time. Uh, uh, for me to stand here and give a conclusion date, um, I'm afraid Wes would put it in the paper. Uh, I, I'm sure he's listening, he is good and, it, and so it's very weather dependent. You know, I I could give a I'm not going to, but I could give a perfect scenario type thing. But then that becomes, well, I thought they said that, and I would rather just say we're going to do everything we can, uh, and I will come back and update you as we go through. But to give a completion date would be virtually impossible. Well, I appreciate the pavement in December. I live on Clayton, so I'm just a block from Ohio, and um, <clears throat> when the roads are closed and traffic moves, and so I get to go through that regardless of the road condition. And that December asphalt was a shocker, and, and pleasantly so, so <laughs> I'm glad that was done. I, I agree that was a shocker. <laughs> so I'm glad you all appreciate Well, and, and I might add to that, too, the, the weekly meetings project meetings one of one of the concerns as time was dripping away or elapsing was we want to get the pipe underground we want to get it closed up and we want it to be closed up in a fashion that's going to be safe for the winter so you guys held the door open for those at the asphalt quite a little while for us much appreciated thank you <clears throat> anything else for mr heidi Thank you, David. All right. Thank you, guys. Drive safely. Yep. Okay. Let's back up here now and look under communications. Uh, next meeting packet information. Yes. I What's want, that all about? Well, <laughs> well, I'm trying to be proactive. I will actually be on vacation next meeting, and I will be leaving. Unacceptable. I yeah. know. I apologize. <laughs> um, unfortunately, spring break falls at the same time. She but I will she's be in the water department or something? Uh, I guess oh, she is. Oh, yeah. I knew yeah. it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Um, <laughs> right there. Laid that right out there, didn't <laughs> Sorry, Derek. Uh, no, I will be leaving we March 19th, and I will not be returning until actually the day of our meeting, March 26th. So, me, I, my so intent. So, you make a meeting? Well, I probably will because that's the way that I am. However, if I have a flight delay or something, Carolyn will be here in my place. But I do want to send the packets out before I leave. I do not want to uh, put that burden on her if I can prevent it. So if there's anything that you anticipate that you would like to have on the agenda for next month, please have it to me by mid, I say March 15th if you could, 16th, somewhere around in there. Um, and, uh, but I will have everything else ready to go. If there is something at the last minute that does need added, please coordinate with um, Mary Benton and Carolyn, and they will do their best to get that on the agenda. It may not be included in the electronic packet. So Wes, if you need anything that comes up afterwards, just let me know when I get back from vacation, please. <coughs> okay. That, that was it. Trying to pre be proactive. <laughs> okay. Now we've got a public uh, hearing to open up and so I will do so right now open the public hearing uh, regarding the uh, street vacation petition by a Mr. Gary Clevenger. Thank you. 
There she is. <laughs> I didn't know if you had more to add to that. <laughs> we never know. You never know. I was waiting. You never know, Casey. Patiently waiting. I kind of thought Terry was going to jump up and hop over the dais here. Oh, no, you could. You could. I could pass on the folder. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Clevenger are requesting that um, the platted right of way line between lots 19 and 20 in the improvement company addition is a portion of what used to be Fifth Street, and what is Fifth Street according to the plat, um, be vacated. In this particular section, it's 145 feet in length, and the right of way that was platted in 18 something or other, this was the original plat. Um, where it existed, it um, it was platted as a 60-foot right-of-way. In this particular case, this right-of-way is not being utilized as a public throughway. Uh, matter of fact, it dead ends into Four Seasons Mobile Home Court. So, for the major, you know, for the the main use of this, the idea was that Fifth Street, Fourth Street, this entire area would be extended to the east. Uh, when that land was further subdivision, subdivided, it was not. It became Four Seasons Mobile Home Court. It is all one parcel. So the extension of Fifth Street is pretty much a moot issue at this point. So um, as it's platted, it will not serve the intended purpose um, as it was when it was platted. So Mr. and Mrs. Clevenger are asking me to present this for them and um, asking the council to vacate that portion. Any questions? It'll be split between 419 and 501, correct? Correct. It's um, lot 19 and lot 20 each get half, so each get 30 feet. Um, and when the ordinance goes over to the auditor's office, they automatically do that unless there was subsequent documentation of agreement between the two owners. But um, it's just, it's automatic. The subdivision splits it, splits the land. And it goes back on tax rolls. Is there any uh, opinion from the other owner? I have not heard anything. Uh, Chada, did you get a phone call from anyone? Uh, uh, the only thing I do have a signature uh, that Mr. Fernandez. Fernandez. <laughs> Victor Fernandez. Victor Fernandez. Uh, he did sign, and my understanding was is there was just a verbal. There was no issue with with that at all. He was the only homeowner I believe affected. Mm -hmm. Or only other He would be. Mm -hmm. And he initialed actually uh, Mr. Clevenger provided that he initialed all of them. The entire petition, every page of it. So <laughs> Any questions? Comments? Concerns? I was wondering, are there any utilities in the underground that it would be affected? <coughs> like, does the sewer run through there that would that need to cap off or anything? Uh, you wouldn't cap it off. You actually don't do anything to the utilities when an alley's vacated like that. The ordinance actually specifies that the easements for all of that still exist. Those, those aren't negated just because you vacate it. So whatever's there is there. <coughs> and just like any other homeowner, you know, an 811 date would have to occur before any kind of construction on it. Of course, you have setbacks, you know, and that type of thing anyway, but um, I would imagine everything runs up, runs up the north-south streets, but I can't imagine they would stub anything into the fifth street, but um, it's possible, but it stays. We have a motion regarding the vacation petition. It's public hearing. I'm sorry, we're going to close the hearing first. Any questions from the floor regarding uh, the vacation issue? Okay. Okay. Then I would uh, I would make a motion, or I would ask for a motion. Mr. Mayor, I I I'm just going to make something up that it should be corrected in the minutes and everything that it is. I was down there, the street sign does say Clayton Street. Clayton Street still Clay. And where, where? On the minutes. Or on the uh, agenda. Oh, on the agenda. Oh, yeah, I think. So, so I, I mean, apologize. that's a small thing, but anything that we do have recorded, we should 
Yes, I no, I did This was all provided to me. So okay, that's fine. But it says this. I was there today, took a look at it, and it was it was Clayton Street. The petition says Clayton. Five hundred one. No, my agenda was. So. I, when I typed the agenda up, um, no, I, didn't take my oh, I typed Clay Street on the agenda. Sure. So, no, your, your documentation is Normally, we don't put street. No, it has names. Oh, you do. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, the, the legal description is 60 foot wide, east west right of way, 145 feet in length, lying between lot 19 and lot 20 located in the improvement company addition as a portion of 5th Street in a plat and subdivision subsequent amendments located in City of Rochester. So it does say 5th. Okay. okay. I apologize for the confusion. Uh, I just want to see y'all around my toes. So without any other questions, uh, okay, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Signed by Goodman, seconded by Heidi. Those in favor, close the meeting. It's all Yes, you have to stay in that's for sure. Meeting's closed. Okay, now I would entertain a, a motion to uh, for the vacation petition. So I'd like to make a motion. We have to normally so we have to review on this. Yeah, it's ordinance. Okay, I'm sorry. It's an ordinance, uh, 01-2019. Uh, I have ask for a, a motion for the first reading of uh, ordinance 01-2019. By title only so moved. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's been moved and seconded to uh, read 01-2019 by title only. Those in favor? <laughs> Those opposed? Okay. Those All right. Ordinance number 01-2019, ordinance vacating public Discussion on the first reading. I'd entertain a motion for the second reading by title only. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded by Fitzwater. Those in favor? Okay. Well, ordinance see. number 01 2019, ordinance vacating public way, City of Rochester, Fulton County, Indiana. Okay, and uh, I would entertain a motion to suspend the rules and have the third reading. By title only. So moved. so moved by Thompson, seconded by Smith. Those in favor? You're on. Ordinance number 01 2019, Ordinance Vacating Public Way, City of Rochester, Fulton County, Indiana. Okay. Make a motion for the passing of 01 2019. So moved. Moved by Goodman. Okay. Seconded by Garrett. Those in favor of 01 2019? Yes. He abstained. Or recused himself. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Casey. Okay, uh, another public hearing for uh, the additional appropriation. We're opening up another public hearing for additional appropriation for the area planning contract. Oh, don't leave. You want to listen to this. <laughs> case. No, I'm actually just cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I would... Uh, <laughs> I'd like to have an explanation, <laughs> Shelly. You got to Well, we've already had an explanation, but I will review it again. Okay. Um, back in, I believe it was December's meeting, when we had the conversation about funding for the area plan office and what that looked like, we had a plan for that in our budget. So I had explained that I would be bringing forward an yeah. additional appropriation request. Council had said at that time to take it out of your budget. That's what this is. And this is the total amount for both pays that were paid out, um, or were agreed to, I should say. Casey did provide an invoice for services provided, and both invoices have been paid. So this is the additional for those services and fees. Okay. Any questions for Casey? Or Shada? Or Casey? <laughs> Balls in your court now. <laughs> 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 
$95,000. And that's, and that's actually uh, a little higher than what the total total enforcement amount was. Um, did you tip her? No. <laughs> no. Um, okay. I just did that in case there was something that had come up additionally, just, just in case. I mean, it's, it's not that much of what I think of. I only rounded up about $1,500, but that, like I said, that was just in case something else came up that she needed. Okay. Any questions from the public? Okay. Move that we close the public hearing. It's been a second. Motion that we close the public hearing by Goodman, seconded by Heidi. Those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, it's closed. Um, now I would. Uh, Entertain a motion for the uh, reading of the <coughs> 01 2019. I have a motion. So moved by title only. Moved by Smith, by title only. Second. Second. Seconded by Thompson. Those in favor? Unanimous. Please speak the resolution. Uh, resolution 01 2019, additional appropriation. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the uh, resolution? So moved. Second. Second. Moved by the <coughs> seconded by Goodman. Those in favor? Okay. Uh, those in favor of resolution 01-2019 signify by raising your hand. It's passed. I just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Yeah, okay. I think that takes us through everything. Uh, public hearing side. Uh, now we're down to uh, department head reports. We heard from Randy. Let's talk here from Fire Chief Butler. <coughs> January 2019, structure fires, one in the city, two in Rochester Township, vehicle fires, one in the city, field fires, one in Henry Township, <coughs> electrical fires, one in the city, auto fire alarms, one in the city, three in Rochester Township, stove fires, one in the city, utility pole fires, one in Rochester Township, gas leaks, one in the city, one in Rochester Township, calls for smoke, two in the city, accidents, two in Rochester Township, one in Liberty Township. Medical assist, 13 in the city, drove the ambulance twice, three in Rochester Township. CO checks, two in the city, one in Rochester Township, one in Newcastle Township. Rescues, one in the city, service calls, three in the city, for a total of 43 um, calls, and we did one drill. Um, as of today, our runs are at 91. So I don't know why we're such the influx, but you can see it's been a variety of everything. It's just not one particular uh, situation. So, uh, pending your questions, that concludes my report. Any questions for Chief Butler? Thank, Thank you all. You got about ready for another load of plywood? I'm sorry? You got about ready for another load of plywood? Yeah. Okay. Uh, DJ. Thank you. <coughs> the plywood business? Okay, Chief uh, Bishop. Uh, let's see, for the month of January, there were a total of 17 accidents. We issued 52 total warnings, 45 were for traffic, 7 were for city ordinance, 88 total offenses, 45 being traffic, 37 criminal, and 6 juvenile. Uh, there were a total of 44 case reports, 525 calls for service, 12 two vehicles, and 15 people incarcerated. And then you have the crime of those individuals who are alive for it. Other than that, we're still with Monitor Ford that we ordered in September. Um, it's got a uh, arrival date of this week sometime, <coughs> we're being told. We'll see what happens. But I was told that we should see, see it arrive sometime this week. Other than that, I'll wait and see. I'll get a fire truck before I get my police car. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it's out of our compression. It's out of which is on. 
That's out of Rochester Planning Control, too. It's just <coughs> waiting. So other than that, that's about all I have. Unless you guys have any questions. Any uh, questions for Chief Shots? Thanks, Chief. Thanks. Lenny Conley. Well, we came in plowed and sanded various times. Uh, I estimated we used a uh, little over 300 tons of salt and sand in January, February. <clears throat> I ordered half of our quota of salt uh, to replenish our pit. Um, mixed it we got it mixed up with some sand, and as we gain room, I will finish our uh, order. Uh, we've been cleaning the trucks inside and out, changing the grader blades, and fix some wire issues with our front plows. Been maintaining the drains and debris as we've had the rain and melting. Cleaned up the shop and hung up some LED drop lights in the bay areas as. The lighting is poor in our barn. Uh, been picking up sticks this week as the weather has been windy out and patching holes as weather permits. That's about all I have. Anything for the park? Um, basically, it's been maintained in the trash, and um, they, uh, they they did finish the uh, number ten shelter on the, up on the hill. So. That's about all I have for that. <clears throat> Any questions for Lenny? Thank you, sir. Yeah. And Mark <coughs> is not here this evening. Derek. Good evening. Good evening, Coach. <coughs> That's about all Congratulations on your wrestlers. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, for the month of January 2019, we ran meters, gear orders, repair and replace bad meters, locates, backwash filter beds, shut off, swept them off the plant. Um, Everpar was here to do our preventive maintenance on our four generators. Everything checked out okay. Uh, we started our asset management inventory program, and um, that is complete all except for pictures of time. And then digs that were performed, we fixed an 8-inch water main leak at 1700 North Old US 31, which was Dean's Food. Sewer department assisted with the vector and loading up, uh, loading us up with backfill. And then I there's quite a few list of call outs. I can go through them if you'd like, or I'll take any questions. I will say all of them are pretty much freeze ups except for a few. That was due to the cold temps. How's your new employee working out? Good. Any questions for Derek? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Derek. Thanks. Harry Webb, Rochester County Park. Product help of the day. This is Justin Brady. He serves on our design committee. But just got a few little notes here. Um, we are getting gearing up for doing the bike racks this spring. They're all done. Me. Um, we would like to install them this spring if possible. Um, we kind of held off last year because of the street light project, but I think we can put them in and put them in places where the, they won't be bothering any of that project if it moves forward. Um, we have, we're, we're relying on uh, Craig's Welding to install them for us. So I kind of like to streamline it so that you know, we can do it all kind of over once. Uh, the process is going to be there. We're going to uh, core drill a hole in the sidewalk that the um, bike rack in, and then it'll get epoxied in. It's kind of a process that sets up really quick. We'll the the next one. But it requires a pretty significant drill to drill that hole in the concrete. It's kind of the process there. We'll be laying those out and marking them you know, as soon as it looks like. The weather's going to cooperate, but we'd like to get it done this spring. Um, <clears throat> we're working on an art project, possibly too. Uh, one of the members of the design committee has, is working with the teachers in the schools and trying to come up with a maybe an art project involving them. Uh, <coughs> elementary school kids where they draw flowers 
and then we take those drawings and put it onto a vinyl that can be applied to some of the abandoned uh, building windows just to kind of decorate up some of the windows and the places that are empty. Um, and just be a vinyl decal, obviously it's going to require the cooperation of the building owner. Um, it's just something to kind of spruce it up a little bit. We'd like to coordinate that and the flower plantings and, you know, that are going to happen. Um, are we moving forward with the flower pots? Yes. That's yeah, good. we're, uh, okay. we may not buy all of them at one time, but uh, the plan there'll, would be to there'll be some change of them. them out. So, you know, we might put together in a little event that kind of markets all of that together, and the new bike racks, the new um, uh, Have flower pots. Have you seen one of the pots? Yeah, yeah, I like them. Yeah, I got one sitting right in front of my door. <laughs> <laughs> that could be nice. <clears throat> yeah. Be nice. We can move the old ones someplace else, maybe. Not sure <coughs> what the plans are for those. Um, these will be certainly easier to move. We have to relocate them. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's kind a, of putting together. It's, it it's a neat concept. It really is. Yeah. So we'll have a hopefully have a spring event that'll involve the flowers, the art project, the bike racks, maybe do a bike raffle, something along that line. Um, we're also exploring the possibility of a billboard promoting downtown's dining and shopping. Uh, we've got some quotes from um, Bur Burkhart, one other billboard company, either using billboards on 31 or on the south end of town, but at this point we haven't got the funds we'll to do a billboard in a, in a significant location, it's like $6,500 per year. So we can get $1,000 from uh, the tourism board for a project like that, but um, we're going to have to be working with some of the local retailers and see if we can get enough interest in doing something like that. $6,500 for a year? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? We could build our own. Could yeah, we possibly could. Certainly could build one for that. Yeah, it's just a matter of acquiring one. Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm open to suggestions, but it would be nice. Yeah, to her look, her look. I think $6,500 just got cheap. <laughs> but we're open for donations as well. And now to talk of, about wayfinding signs, we have been working on a little project there too. With Justin Brady here. <clears throat> Well, when we first started talking about it several months ago, um, I, I'm sure you probably have seen them in other cities, and just the you know, library this way, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, we looked at, um, you know, potentially having some money available for it. We do not. Um, so I've talked to a couple companies. We actually had some, but uh, a company come down and just kind of spell out the process of it. And we have some rough costs of, you know, Forty to fifty thousand, uh, depending on what uh, you know, what level we end up doing. Um, that includes like all the design. They you know map out the community and advise where they go and they're like DOT certified signs. Um, they know I, I was talking to some folks in Kokomo and theirs were about five grand a piece. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> substantial. The now we can absorb some of that cost in the installation. Um, you know, if we try to, you know, use some local people, you know, things like that. Like when we put in the benches, we just went out and drilled holes in the, the men. So E and B Paving's offered to install them. For sure. So I'm not sure so, if that means free, but it would be definitely a reduced cost. Right. So really, what we're looking for is, you know, is this important? Um, is it something that we, you know, you'd like us to? You know, continue down the road. You know, maybe bring somebody in and actually consult and say, "Here's where we think the sign should go. This is what we think you need." Just kind of looking for some direction or desire from the council because we, at this point, we, if first we thought it was going to be a DEG funded, partially funded grant through the state. Oakra has a DEG grant that can pay for potentially 50 percent. Well, that program gone away. So that funding op mechanism is not available. And they do it in two phases. They do a phase one where they design the sign and design the locations, and then they give you cost estimates. And then the second phase is 
um, <coughs> the implementation phase and the installation phase of it. So it, it can be bid um, with one company to do both, or you can get two separate companies or whatever, but um, we're just, at this point, we don't want to continue to spin on wheels if, we're, if this is not a desired project to continue with, because it is going to have to be, um, would have to be, you know, put into the budget somewhere along the line over a year or two process or some money saved away for it. It's just we don't really know where, if this is even something the council is wanting us to move forward with. And I always think those signs make the downtown area look inviting. You know, I think it always looks nice. I don't know, you know, if we've got other projects going on, if we wait till we get streetscape stuff done to do those or wrap those into a budget on a streetscape, or if that if that's so far out that we can use signs to help in the meantime. Um, right? I'm in favor of them. I think they look nice. And they, Help, especially as we try to draw more people into our downtown that don't know where everything is. I mean, we don't need signs, but they're not for us. And this isn't just downtown. You know, this sure. these would be throughout the community. The also part of the sign is there's a, you know, they have to have a certain base and then a break point and then the sign, um, you know, they could be taken off and you know as they you know you do the light poles or whatever. Then you can actually have the sign with the arrows. I mean, you put that right back on whatever it, you know, you have taken it off of. So they're somewhat portable. I mean, they're bolted down, obviously. But um, and, and again, if it's if it's not important, we move on and focus on you know the next project. It just we just got to a point where we thought, okay, well we have some price points. What do we do? Well, I think it's an interesting concept, and and I would be open to it. But at the same time. I just, until I uh, was able to look at, you know, how many signs are going up and where they're going and what they're for, um, and relating that to the cost of 40 or 50,000, I wouldn't, I mean, I'm open to it. Is there, um, is, is there a cost for the phase one that you were talking 56, about? 5,600. Yeah, 5,600 dollars. And that's the complete design, the layout of the community, you know, um, you'd have a look. You'd have a quote. What, what kind of what kind of points do they point to? Whatever we want. Um, usually, it's like um, public access sites. You know, the lake, hospital, uh, library, swimming pool. Swimming pool. They um, he recommended the fairgrounds because it's you know off the beaten path. You know, things like schools. that. Schools. Yeah. Any schools. Um, I mean, it could be anything. It could just be to courthouse or we would have some input on what they pointed to but I think the school would pitch in. I don't know. It might be a good idea. We have signs, some signs, right? That say yeah. rudimentary point out there. Yeah. It would be a consistent look, you know, that they would work through this process and, and they'd also identify all those items how many signs are needed to do it, and you kind of come up with a shopping list then as to where your priority is. You know? yeah. And it doesn't have to all be done in one year. If you had, once you had the plan in place, you could sit there and say, well, we can budget five signs this year to five signs next year or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there probably are, some signs might be small, you know, less expensive than $5,000. Like if it's just a city pool sign sitting in one spot, and it's the only thing they can really point to, it's going to be a smaller sign and could have a consistent look, but it may be a three thousand dollars. But it, um, did your consultant have any uh, thoughts as to how that would affect your signage ordinance situation? I mean, you 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 go down this trail and you have a a uh, a signage unity established, then it gets real tough for the Grace United Methodist Church to throw a sign up someplace. And, doesn't it? Do they do they cut all that out or? Well, it really is the, you know, desires of this council of what you want to do with it from there. You know, do we take other signs down? Uh, that's really going to be all part of that. If you you know, if we can consolidate some of these signs. Yeah, I, I think in most cases these are going to be public spots that it's pointing to. It's not going to be any businesses or. And there's not. They're not going to. 
be downtown. I mean, a lot of the signs won't be there. They could be, you know. It might point out the parking lots in the downtown area. Yeah. It'll park out, you know, point out the library. Um, Arboretum maybe. Um, City Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, the three companies I, uh, I got, I talked to, um, have all done cities like Kokomo, Peru, um, Plymouth, or Culver was another one that they did. So they're you know fairly local uh, cities, and so I drove around and looked at them, and they all, I mean, they're nice. But I don't know, you know how important they are, but nice to have. Did I hear right? You're estimating roughly ten signs. Yeah, that's probably a pretty close number. I mean, that number can change based on whatever the budget is. You know, you and, could, and that number, included, I think you could identify ten spots, but you may yeah. say, "Well, we got four top priority, you know, whatever." But once you have your design made, then you can. Plymouth has nice signage, but. They are not, I don't know how enormous they are, but if they're paying $5,000 for a sign that's three foot long and, you know, 12 inches tall. I don't know, I don't know how much they pay per sign. Well, yeah. you were talking somebody said, here, $5,000 to Co sign. Co 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 okay, well, the Plymouth signs are good, but I can't imagine those signs costing, and they're, kind of, they're helpful, uh, but then again, they really don't do anything that Siri does either. Right. Well, the and getting you and getting you around and you know, that they have the signs for Siri takes you to the same place. A, a lot of the cost, though, being on a like any state highway, they have to have. I can't remember. He described it to us, but the, the base has to be four foot down. Yeah, hurricane proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, it has to be. And the the brake points that they have to install in it can, can cause. So if you hit it with a vehicle, it breaks right off. Then. Yeah. So, um, and so. That is a substantial part of the cost, and we haven't talked to anybody, you know, you know, you'd be anybody that can have the ability to produce these uh, to talk to them about price. It, and most of the prices, or a lot of the prices in that, I definitely think will hold on. Sure. Would you think all the money would come from the city? Is that what you're thinking? At this point, unless we went to a you know a grander application and did you know street streetscaping or bundle this into. Um, you know, one other, you know, what other big granting opportunity it could be thrown in uh, to some other beautification project potentially down the road. It's just a matter of if we want to continue this implementation or just table it, ponder it. Since we have State Road 14 and 25, which is our 9th Street and Main Street, our local ordinance, the ordinance for signage does not apply. Is that correct? Do we have to follow an NDOT uh, signage or have different regulations on those? Your zoning ordinance for the sign ordinance doesn't apply in the right-of-way because you own the right-of-way. Okay. So that, that that's always been the council's prerogative, but Keep in mind, between 9th Street and 4th Street is not State Highway. Right, right. But they're talking so, other areas of the city. So I'm thinking right. probably would be out maybe towards the lake coming in or south. Or coming yeah. in, you know, so I'm thinking other areas if that's what they think. That's yeah, why it's South Point, if they put the railroad tracks right now, that's State Highway. Mm -hmm. But potentially, if they look into this corridor, that wouldn't be. Like if you look between 9th and 4th and even 4th Street to the pool, your cost should change. If you know, as you're saying, you know, INDOT has specs that cost a lot. You know, you might want to ask them for the difference for not being on a state highway. Yeah, I think that you know his initial spec was we designed them for DOT standards, but so you can use them it, wherever. But they, they may have a cheaper option if that's a substantial part of the cost, and we don't need them. <coughs> we can cut our costs in half and get the same size. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And, and, Unfortunately, you know, the uh, consultation for him them to actually put the, you know, $5,600, I think 5613 is what he quoted us for. So uh, that was where we kind of just said, well, we better talk to the first. That's a, that's a lot just to get a picture. Like, yeah, you're going to have, from that, you're going to have locations and you're going to have, a, you're going to have a plan that you can then implement when you want to implement it. Because I'll do the, Artwork, you know, all of that is involved in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
they do location analysis and they meet with you and determine what you want to make sure you're highlighting and they prioritize it so you have top priority and second you know tier stuff. <coughs> Just is that an indefinite? It's the table. table. The table is, in, is, is indefinite. So it's not. It can always be brought back up again, but as far as tonight's going, without chasing our tails around the, the room too long, I think right now it, it's just be best tonight to table. <coughs> is there any kind of a timeline that you have? No. In I mean, we were just, at all? you know, I just thought we just really wanted to inform the council as to what we worked on where we were at no point in developing this thing any farther if it's not the desire of the city so um it's just kind of you know just kind of our initial exploration of the project it's something i think is, you know as a rochester, rochester downtown partnership design committee would like to see done someday but obviously the city is the in charge of the funds for this kind of project so if it's not the desire then we have other things we can work on well, we have a motion on the table. Uh, it's been moved and seconded to postpone indefinitely the wafer signage topic. Those in favor? Hey, so, I mean, we're, we're just saying we might be interested in the future. We're not saying we're taking we're 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 No, table. But, but they're looking for guidance. We're not saying scrap it, forget about it. Yeah. We're saying not right now. We're I, saying that's what yeah, tabling is. Yeah. 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 We're realize, setting it here for right now. Yeah. To chase, I don't. Well, what I'm hearing is, I don't know anybody's ready to step up and say, right. I would put fifty thousand in. The I, I just want to make sure they were clear oh, on sure on what. Yeah. 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 You know, perhaps during your budget discussion, you can decide if you want to move a few dollars into developing this. If I a little bit more exactly, cost per where we have to put them up. <coughs> well, projects like this trim that a little bit, you know. Projects like this take time, so you're you're looking at a you know one or two year process to, to do it. And so. Uh, <coughs> okay. Do we have a vote? Those in favor of tabling? I want to table it for six months. Otherwise, it's going to be on our agenda every month until. Right. Well, we get we got a motion on the. If, if the motion right is to table it, I just I just told Shana it needs to be up as old business next month. To, to have a table, unless you want to table it to a date certain, um, that's what tabling is. Otherwise, you can, if, if your if your desire is to end the discussion, you you want it. Yeah. if your desire is to end the discussion, you don't need a motion. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll move on. Yeah. It's up to you. You can you can table it, but if you, what you really want is to just say, I, I think we need to move on. We don't have a decision to make tonight. You don't need a motion. Anymore. You just need to convince the person. I withdraw my my motion. If you want, but then I I will withdraw my motion. Okay, no point bringing it up every month. No, no, no. But it is can be brought up at any other time in the future. Is what I was. Sure. I don't think we're saying we don't ever want to do it. I just think at this stage. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather see it wrapped into a streetscape project Who seconded that motion? Yeah, I did too. Yes, withdraw. Withdraw. I withdraw. Fine. Okay. I'll withdraw my note. Can I go back to the bike thing for sure. just one quick second? Uh, it occurred to me while I was sitting here that uh, one of the Kiwanis International uh, objectives for this year is a bike safety uh, class in every community. Wow. And uh, I know they have a, a week that they are trying to shoot for, but it's not, I'm not working on it personally, but I know that that's uh, fluid and could change, but it might be something that could go in conjunction with something if you're looking at bike racks and- Yeah, we're thinking you know, something in May. Like yeah, it might be fun to just bundle it all together. Okay. And they, they, they might have the location advertising. Location for the bike racks. We got 
general ideas. A lot of them are going to be where the benches are. There'll be a bike rack at every bench that are currently installed. I just want to make sure you don't put those over somebody's shut off. <laughs> right. Yeah, we won't do that. I mean, if, as long as it's visible. That'd be fun. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, it might be a good idea to move up your map. Yeah, we probably should locate some drill holes anyway. Because I don't think that would not I don't, be good. Well, I'm just saying I don't think you did it for the benches, but I never, right. I never went and looked. That was, so you know, I understand deep. that, but yeah. are they removable too? Yeah. Okay. The bike, the bike rack is going to be a little harder to move. It is removable, but you got to cut the epoxy out. Oh, it'll be easy to move. <laughs> we have a thumb. <laughs> we have I'm just asking this bitches. ahead of time so you don't have to remove them. That's right. what I'm asking. Yeah, we'd like to do it once. If you just give me a location of where they're going to go, I can look and see if they're even in the vicinity. We have we have a general map, and we'll get that finalized and get with you on it. Okay. So we can... It'd just make it easier. Because there are going to be some that aren't where the bike racks are, but... There's some, there's a few extras as well. <laughs> Anything else, uh, council? For Marty, um, Marty, we uh, Safe Routes of School did a um, bike safety course last uh, year. We held it at the during the 4-H fair, and it was very well received there. We had 70 plus kids um, for the event at the fair. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that works for that group, but it might be an idea that. Well, there's Is a lot that of kids something that, are, that they plan on doing every year, Terry? Uh, that grant's over, <coughs> so unfortunately we don't. I mean, we do have a few like incentive items. I mean, last year we were able to give away bikes um, to I think ten different kids, but we don't have funds for that this year. So that might take kind of slide in and take the place. We worked with the Winona Lake Bike Shop. They came over and did a nice ABC of your bike, air brakes, chain, stuff like that. Had an obstacle course for kids to ride around, and everything. So I'll mention that. What group was it that was doing that? He was. Okay. Yeah, they started Anything bike else? They started bike rodeos back in the day. Harry and Justin. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> okay, uh, Terry, I'm going to have you come up next before we get into the council. <laughs> yeah. 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 What am I doing? Head come. <laughs> or a redevelopment commission. Whatever Sorry, you want. want. Go ahead. A redevelopment commission. Go ahead. Just a redevelopment commission. <coughs> but, um, we've met a couple times since the last city council meeting. We have a meeting tomorrow, but I understand, uh, Mayor, you're not available. Yeah. And then Bill Bowers is not available. Uh, we had uh, Bill, excuse me, Ben and Bill Beer from U.S. <laughs> last uh, week, actually, looking at uh, two specific projects, the Nicoplex Trail Extension, with our bid of $800,000 for a boardwalk. Unless you guys want to write a check for that or 20% of that, we're looking at other options. Um, the discussion was to see what we could acquire some additional land to the west. Uh, met with the owner of that land a couple times. He told me this afternoon what he'd be willing to, to do. Um, so that possibility is a possibility. Well, I know you're in negotiations there, but is it workable? To say you see a workable solution? Uh, going the, through the wetlands just isn't workable. That's not going to right. apply. Um, it, it would be workable um, from a construction standpoint, I would think. Obviously, I'd want to talk to Bill and Ben about that, but um, the acquisition price um, was uh, given to me today and the amount of land and, and so forth, so okay. um, we can talk about that. I don't know if we want to cancel the meeting tomorrow. Um, we also talked about the Apache Drive project. Um, I um, have a meeting with the owner of that property, but not until after the Redevelopment Commission meeting tomorrow, so I wouldn't have that information really to share yet. If, if I may, Terry, uh, if you were to ask me, um, Kirk Hall, Attorney Perkins, uh, the negotiation of purchase of property is constituted under an executive right. session, so I would recommend if you're going to be discussing acquisition of property with regards, I would. We yeah, announce it as such. The executive session. Session. That way you guys can discuss numbers freely without. And I thought we might, um, in lieu of a couple of absences, look at maybe postponing the meeting tomorrow till our regular scheduled meeting would be the end of March. So I don't want to wait that long. But 
we can uh, can we have a tally the attendance of the resource commission members and see if there's a date that we can meet for executive or an executive. <coughs> yeah, why don't we look look try to do an earlier meeting than the end of March? Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other redevelopment, uh, we're looking at the, uh, the manufactured gas plant site that belongs to Nipsco, it's the end of 8th Street. Um, I sent um, Mayor and Shot, I think, and Andy an access agreement that Nipsco needed us to sign. They want to do some water wells on the property that the city owns on the other side of Indiana Avenue. IDEM is making them do a couple of uh, punches um, to test uh, groundwater to see if there's anything leaving the site. Um, they plan to do that um, after they move the gas line um, this summer. Um, so they're waiting for weather for that, but they'll need that access agreement <coughs> to go in and punch a couple of wells. Um, they won't be permanent wells. Um, they'll just um, bore down and take a couple samples. Um, and then, I mean, there'll be some disturbance of the ground over there, but so that access agreement needs to be reviewed and, and signed. So they have, you know, they have permission to onto the city property for that. Um, and then I guess the other other topic is, you know, just Highway 31, what that's gonna look like. Um, is there any update on the uh, missing property over there on 8th Street? Is the, is the boundary moving forward with that? The phase one is done. Um, it was delayed because of the federal government shutdown because we were going through the EPA Brownfield Assessment Grant that we have in the coalition with Logansport. Um, that has, I just got an email late this afternoon, I think they've cleared that and have scheduled the phase two, they did ask for a phase two, so the idea there is Rochester Metal Products plans to buy that site um, after the environmental um, work is done. So the phase one protects them from liability, um, environmental liability on the site, so that's really all they need to move forward. So I think they want the phase two just to drill it down a little bit more, no pun intended. See if there's uh, anything there. So I don't know what their timeline is on actually moving forward. They just want it for a buffer. Um, and then also they wanted to have access to both sides of the creek so they could make sure, you know, that if they have to, they'll, they'll, be, they'll take some responsibility for going in and keeping the creek open, you know, to prevent flooding. They do have one corner of their property that's um, in a flood zone. So they want to make sure that creek stays, out, you know, empty. So that's you know, kind of a, another, Probably some city responsibilities on that too. Uh, yeah, so yeah. it's important to Rochester Metal to stay open. So that's another reason. We're, we're also it. waiting on a guardrail to be uh, priced out there. <laughs> I'm with you. Okay. Who is responsible to keep that creek clean? I, I would default to the Department of Natural Resources. Um, I'm just asking because there's a tree all the way across it. I would, I would say, Derek, I'm not 100% sure, I would say DNR. <coughs> Tributaries and waterways. Where is the tree located? Between our lower shed and, and uh, Indian, Avenue. Indian Avenue. And the three culverts are pretty much full. Are they? What, on 4th, Main, and where's the other one? No, I'm talking right there at, the, at Indian They're Avenue. They're full again because they did oh. clean them out. Like, a month ago, who cleaned the county, them out? The county come and cleaned them out. There's the county did. Still with their backhoe. There's quite a bit there. Yeah, the surveyor, through the surveyor's office, the county could have some responsibility there too, on the drainage side, drainage board. Casey, do you know? But okay. RMP, they're, you know, they're taking personal responsibility. Uh, I don't know yeah. if they're involved doing that or not. But, uh, so that's it for redevelopment commission. <coughs> Questions for Terry. Thank you, Terry. Sure. But we'll let Goodman handle that. Go, okay. Sure. Great. Yeah. That doesn't break my heart. No. Good night. All right, Brian. You're up. Mike Gary, Gary tells us they didn't have a meeting first. No. Oh. I'm <laughs> just giving you. We'll jump around here a little bit. I'm really forward. looking forward to We're giving some, <laughs> giving some continuity right, to, the, to the presenters here. Well, Redco did meet on February 7th. I was not able to attend. Uh, looking at the minutes, a lot of people were not able to attend. Um, so everyone, we've been talking about the contractor services. We know where you are. Um, 
at the appropriate time, Terry will go back to the county and ask for the next six months, um, and then we'll see where we're going from there. Um, so, kicking around the annual meeting, uh, looks like we're we're going to go forward with a uh, meeting that's open to the public. Um, we're gonna we're just finalizing. <coughs> Terry. Today's next, next upcoming meetings. The January 29th meeting with Blair Milo had to be done on through WebEx because of the weather. Um, there are a few that attended um, on, on online. So Pat Brown, out of that, reached out to Terry after the meeting to see if he was familiar with Belden Company. And they have a system in place that if an employee tests positive for drugs, they get them into the rehab and keep them engaged. Um, a lot of things going on that could be a useful tool for some businesses. And the work ethics certificate, uh, Terry needs to reach out to Chuck Evans and Chris Kiesling to find out which kids are still eligible for the certification. Uh, a survey he did of local businesses, robotics and logistics training came out of out of that survey. Terry reached out to Purdue to inquire about the training. He was told there's no training at this time. Uh, also talking about whether or not Fedco should post a job there. Um, one, to kind of let the community know that the need, you know, we have plenty of jobs here in this area. Uh, workforce is, a, is uh, an issue for most companies in the area. Um, there's just not enough people to go around, and as far as I know, I've heard, you know, I know our business is booming and we're growing at a really rapid pace, and we just can't keep people, and I think that everyone around us is in the same boat. Um, traditionally, when people think about economic development, they think about bringing in that large employer. We can't handle a large employer right now just because we don't have people to fill the jobs that they would, they would need. So, I mean, that's kind of where, where I see economic development going is more, you know, workforce development. But um, we are still looking for that big employer, even though it would be a struggle to, to get employees for it. Uh, the Nickel Plate Trail is trying to decide what to do after getting a proposal for boardwalks in the wetland area. Uh, the extension, that it came in at $800,000. Um, Terry talked a little bit about the Brownfield Grant. Uh, not only is it Rochester Metal using it, um, Elliot Hazen's using it for his building on Main Street. Um, the JAG specialist at Rochester High School is looking for people to talk to her students about occupations in Fulton County or to open up their businesses for a tour of a class of 20. So, Terry, did you have anything you need to add? I'm, that I wasn't at the meeting. I don't yeah, know, just on the out. training, uh, we're looking at Ivy Tech or um, Purdue. Um, we're waiting on House Bill mm -hmm. 1002 right now uh, in the General Assembly that will provide the funding um, so it's not 100% off of uh, the employers, out of the employer's pockets. Um, the other Brownfield uh, grant we're using is uh, for the town of Kiwana. They've got a couple of projects or properties that the county has had on um tax sale for a while they've been sold and offered to the town of or offered to the town of Kiwana. But Kiwana wants the, the uh phase ones on those. Um so we're moving forward on that. Um yeah the thing about the uh the workforce is, is a big issue. Um you know we have uh two thousand people a day that drive out of the county for, for jobs. So <coughs> if we were able to attract those people to stay in the county, then we could match those employees up with with, an, with a larger employer here. So that's, um, you know, a, a still remains a target for us to, to do that. I guess the issue would be the where, the location, the infrastructure to it, um, also as much as anything. So part of that infrastructure is underground and part of it's, you know, the human capital we need. So we do have a lot of folks that are residents here that don't work here. So it's going to be kind of the market for our traction effort to say we're sending people out that could be attractive to say um, if there were a larger employer. So part of what's going on. Okay. Any questions for uh, Brian? Okay, Area Planning Commission. Carrie. 
We did not have a meeting. I need to fill up there. I was intense. <laughs> <I'm> intense. <laughs> uh, you don't say it like Karen did. <laughs> okay, uh, park board. Make it win ten. Yes. All right. We met on the 11th of February. Uh, we finished our elections in last month, and so we had president and VP, but we were short members, so we had no one else to vote on. Uh, the new secretary is Mitch Hayes. Um, Kim Landis, if you remember last month, was her last meeting. Um, the new member was there this month. It's Shelly Coles. And our new auxiliary high school member is Jordan Jennings. And into the meeting, Lori at the pool. Um, if you recall, there's been some issues with the filters. They're very old and outdated and need, need fixed. She ordered some last year. They didn't fit, so the company came, took measurements, took actually one of the pieces with them to custom build. So some of those should be in in about a month or so. Hopefully those work, and if they do, we'll be able to order, order a few more. I think there's 36 filters on our system, and they're 500 bucks a piece. So we're, she's going to order you know, five a year until they're you know, all Changed finished out. out. They're, you know, they're like 30 years old, she thinks. So, I mean, they're, they're in pretty bad shape. Um, she's also looking at a new um, acid safer for their system than the current hydrochloric acid that they currently use. So something she might try this year, she's not sure yet. Um, the new slide piece came in and will be installed sometime when the weather cooperates I have here, right Lenny? <laughs> yeah. Good? Okay. All right. Um, and the big shelter, you said shelter 10 is done? You said the yeah. big shelter is done? Yeah. And you're also getting a new shop truck. Got it. Okay. Then for Lyle at the golf course, um, he only has five whole sponsors left, and those should be up in the next few months. Pro shop has been up, open with limited hours due to the cold, and they got the new John Way or John Deere fairway mower. Um, it was delivered, but they, or I guess it was back from service. Now they've taken it apart to sharpen and clean everything, and. That is it. Any questions? That's pretty complete. Um, I think I don't know if we kick this around or not. This filter situation is probably going to get worse as time goes on. Probably ought to be smart and start accruing some money back for that area. Because that is a pretty expensive thing to replace, wasn't it? And she, she had some figures that were pretty heavy. But it's like the heart of your pool system. What is the expected life of those filters? These are the originals. I know they said in 30 years that they were they needed to be replaced. I'm not sure. And the, the problem, the main problem is these are all having to be handmade because no system's like this anymore. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, just, I was surprised the guy selling the systems didn't say, ah, you know, these can't be. Made. So could you imagine what it cost yeah. to change your system? Yeah, I mean, it sounded like five hundred dollars was a lot. It'd be more. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be a lot. Yeah, I, I seen the filters. They're they're ancient. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah. So and she said some of the new filters are more like, what would you say? Almost like a sand. Yeah, it's a whole different technology. Just can, yeah. so, so they work. Yeah, I mean, what we have works in theory. It's just something that at some point they may say, well. We can't get filters. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. You're exactly right. How much is on my pool when I replaced it? How much it cost me on a residential pool? I can imagine what our. So, like I said, ours has 36 filters. Even the new ones that aren't the same style are many, many less than that. Well, weren't you surprised the guy didn't? <coughs> yeah. You think you got to buy a system? So anyway, I, it's probably going to be good for us to start accruing some money back. This, uh, well, the first go around, Mason, correct me if I'm wrong. The first go around, they went to make a filter for it, and it didn't work. Work. They yeah. didn't make it right. Yeah, they got it. And that's why. They, <laughs> that's why this time they actually took the piece with them since it was down. They, they, they were building last year while the pool was open. Got it back. Didn't fit. But once the pool closed, they took the piece. Took one of the pieces with them. To have them all handmade to the right side. So 
So anyway, we'll get those numbers from Lori and recommend that we get some money, start referring some money for a system down the road. Because if she gets by another couple of seasons, I think she'll be very fortunate with it. Any questions for Mason? <coughs> One other thing, just off that, putting money aside, because she said it's such an old citizen that she's nervous at times that, you know, the regulators may come in and say, well, this, this isn't up-to-date technology, or, you know, something along those lines where they don't accept that anymore, and then would be in a really, really bad position. Yeah, she's just speculating that. That's never Speculating, occurred. yeah. That's never occurred, but it's ancient, it's ancient technology. And, you know, uh, praise to her and Kimberly, uh, for for what they put into keeping that pool alive. A few years ago, that pool was going to close, and they put a lot of personal effort into making sure we kept it open. And things got some some of the things got upgraded to keep it viable. Hey, and it is. It's one of the jewels of our community for young folks. My gosh, you know, how many people shot it? Do we run through there? It's it's amazing. Thousands and thousands yeah, of folks. I forget what the final number was last year, but Lori reported Big number. Yeah, it was more than what you expected. Yeah, it was a lot. You're right, Derek. It was a lot more than I, I just can't recall it off the top of my head. Sorry. Was it over 10, 10 12,000? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was higher than that. But uh, we need to keep it going, so we'll start putting some money back. For <coughs> okay, anything else for Mason? Okay, uh, BZA and Council on Aging, uh, Councilman Smith. Sure. Sure. <laughs> we'll start with uh, Council on Aging. We met yesterday. Uh, the Council on Aging is going to apply for a community foundation grant. That's going to happen uh, later this week, uh, asking for funds that would provide a matching, our matching requirement to uh, secure uh, three new vans for uh, Transpo. We have a, uh, currently have a quilt that has been donated by Chris Sutton. It's a very nice quilt that is being auctioned and you can stop by right now and buy uh, raffle tickets for that quilt if you're so interested. <coughs> We are currently looking for a uh, board member. We had uh, one that just work didn't allow her to attend any longer. So uh, we need a board member and we passed our 2019 budget. <coughs> for uh, RSVP, the free tax preparation for seniors uh, is continuing through March 6 so that is ongoing I don't know how many they've done to date the uh, green carnation sales have begun and uh, businesses are being called but anybody is free to <coughs> order green carnation that's a fundraiser for RSVP and uh, they are dollar fifty per flower unfortunately they had to cancel the Virginia Beach trip that they had scheduled for May. Uh, but the September trip to Colorado Springs already has 35 to 40 people signed up, so that one will still be ongoing. For Transpo, I thought I would uh, share just a couple of numbers that uh, everybody seems to kind of enjoy in uh, the month of February uh, for 2019, they have to date done 3,231 trips. Uh, but so for what period of time? That's February so uh, February so far. So far, yes. 3,000 trips. The uh, statistics, uh, the state of Indiana has finally uh, gotten out the statistics for 2017. And 
this is based on, according to their numbers, and uh, this is all done by the state, has nothing to, we provide um, data to them, but they compile all these statistics. According to them, uh, the residents, there are 20,836 residents of Fulton County. And uh, Council on, I'm sorry, the Fulton County Transpo, it costs $1.65 a, a mile for operating expenses for what the uh, uh, Transpo does. And if the numbers are right as far as population, Transpo moved every citizen of Fulton County 2.16 times in the year of 2017. <laughs> so, really? Yeah, and that is way higher. I don't remember the trip. Well, you you wouldn't. You didn't remember a vote tonight. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 the trip in 2017 would be absolutely impossible. <laughs> but, um, He's getting quick. <laughs> this is... Uh, we are considerably higher than Marshall County and Cass County, and uh, I mean, our numbers of trips are. It's amazing. Has, it's amazing. It really is amazing. So, uh, I hope you all were treated well in the 2.1 time <laughs> that you were transposed. And uh, other questions? That's the end of my report. <laughs> Any questions for Council Smith? Um, I'm wondering if um, last year they had some passes, the Transpo for yes. the Area 5 Head Start. They had a couple or something designated. So, because some kids weren't able to get rides to the um, preschool, um, to the Area 5 Head Start because their um, their parents had car issues or for whatever reason. And so Transpo did provide um, provide some passes and I don't didn't know if that was continuing this year or if um, if you knew where that was at it has not been determined yet okay it I'm hoping it will be okay because yeah. I'd be happy to support it even outside of the council if I can give service appreciate that thank you. thanks okay it is a nice program for those children I agree Anything else for Councilman Smith? Okay, uh, solid waste and animal adoption, Councilman Thompson. <clears throat> no medium for the animal center for the solid waste. Since the January meeting, the recycling center shipped 55 tons of recyclables with a value of $3,015.88. Uh, for the month of December 2018, County Line Landfill received 35,076 tons of waste in 22 working days for a daily average of 1,594 tons per day. Fulton County accounted for 5,132 tons. The rest of the meeting included 29,943 tons. There was 20.11 tons of out-of-state trash collected. The host fee for the month was $46,208.61. And the county host fee for the month of December for okay, yeah, the county was fourteen thousand nine hundred seventy-one dollars and eighty-two cents. Um, since the since the January meeting, we sold one hundred and sixty of the orange bags, uh, bringing that total to five thousand six hundred seventy-five, of which two thousand seven hundred sixteen were purchased by the city residents and two thousand nine hundred fifty-nine were purchased by county residents. Um, so far, they've collected $3,127 for the disposal of bulk items. That's about it. Okay. Any questions for Chase? I have one. Uh, Chase, are we still operating under the same operating agreement when, uh, as when the, the landfill was open 20 Correct. years ago, we 25 are. years ago? They're actually looking at that. Um, Stacy just had a meeting with Cody, and she hasn't. I think we're all going to get together, the county, the solid waste, and um, make up a new agreement. So we're working on that right, actually right now. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>
for it. some point, the tree board may present something to the, the council for a possibly re uh, revising of the, uh, the ordinances regarding trees and tree law. So when, if it does come up, then you just know that things have been in the works. Uh, they are still working on the, the last uh, contract for removing and pruning trees. They're probably the original contractor, and the second one is trying to get things done, but <coughs> He said we're trying to get them done in January, depending on the weather. So we know what's happening since January in this month. So um, as soon as he's available, we'll get out and get it done. We're going to be done, and then the next contract will be bid after that as well. We want to make sure we get the first one done before we get the second one put out. Uh, the uh, Eric Finninger is um, helping to revise the website for the tree, for the tree board, which I, I believe is under the cities as well. And he said, once the editing is done, he's going to get the changes to shot for the publication. Uh, Arbor Day is coming up in a few months, and we're working on getting uh, a nice presentation, uh, commemorating all the years the city has been a continuous number of years as a tree city. Uh, so we're going to be doing that. Maybe work with the high school uh, for ideas with that. But there's a, getting the kids involved for the next generation to understand what's going on, and hopefully they'll They'll work you know, almost their adults, you know, they understand what's going on. Um, one thing that's been that was carried over from the previous meeting was the, uh, the terms for each of the three board members. As you know, it's one year, two year, three year. Most of them have been on there for a number of years, and they're, they're happy to be there, but there's no set, you know, this is my term end this year, and I can get reappointed or, or something. It's at some point, they'll all be, they'll all go off the board, one reason or another. Uh, so they're, they're working on that, and also working with Attorney Perkins to look at the ordinances to make sure that we do things that in a proper way. And if, you know, if other points need to be made, then uh, look at that as well. So that's all I have for tree work. Any questions for Brian? Okay, thank you, Councilman. Uh, water board? What about the EMS board? Oh, I'm sorry, EMS. EMS board did meet, actually. They did, okay. <laughs> I was not able to go, but Chief Butler was. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. <laughs> well, this sounds like a period. Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> met February 8th. Um, Gail was in, and she kind of updated them on the software and how it's coordinating with their dispatch and run numbers. All that seemed to be getting worked out. Um, Pat did provide some uh, EMS stats uh, breaking down by types of run, times of call, age of calls, types of injuries. I have all this information. One of the things I found interesting is with this new software he's got, he's able to plot um, by colors on where the significant run numbers are. And if you can see, the city of Rochester hits red dead center. So here's the total report if you guys want to pass around and look around. But it gives, like I said, type of runs, <coughs> When the calls come in, the age, if you're 51, 75, you're in a higher call that you're going to need EMS or bigger. But it's all broken down into pretty in, in depth report. Another thing you talked about is uh, we did receive a grant for four new AEDs for Rochester Fire Department. We'll be getting one of those. Um, I completed a survey uh, with EMA, EMS, Lutheran, and the Community Foundation. They're able to secure four new AEDs. We'll update ours. Ours are about 20 years old. These are going to be manufactured by Zoll, so they'll go with the uh, EMS defibrillators. So once we have our pads on, they can come in just we need to switch pads connections instead of switching the pads, taking those off and, and re reapplying those. Another good thing Pat said, he'll be able to just kind of, when we use them, just get us the pads to resupply. They're about 150 bucks um, if we order them through the AED store. Another thing they're working on too, 
with the Community Foundation, which is pretty interesting, is, is CPR. And if anyone here has ever been CPR certified, do it for a couple, like 10 minutes, you're pretty well winded. There is a machine out that'll do compressions. Uh, so working with the Community Foundation, they have uh, coming through the station. I know I've seen two different vendors that they're working on trying to figure out what vendor is going to be the best. So if we have someone on the second floor trying to do CPR going down the stairs, it's near impossible. We apply this machine to them. The machine will do the compressions, and we can carry the victim and move them seamlessly. Um, the, the big thing now with CPR is actually the, the circulation over the breath. So if we can keep that heart going in, in that muscle memory and trying to get it kick-started, um, it's going to be a great benefit. So that's something that's up and coming. Another thing uh, we talked about is, uh, for, especially for the outline, to keep your EMT license and your first responder license requires uh, continuing education, and Lutheran has been putting on classes out at the station in the evening times, um, as well as providing food uh, before the meeting. So they're, they're doing their part to try to keep our skies uh, recertified. So uh, depending on your questions, that's about all they have for the EMS. Super. Thank you. Good report. Thanks, Tom. Cool. Any questions? OK, now the water board. Now the water board. Now the water board. All righty. Well, Derek, for the board, that the uh, high service pump number one, the old plant is down, and until Perilous can Midwest can get there to take a look at it, it will be fixed. It will be fixed. Yeah, it yes. will be. Okay. They got a camera at now. All right. And uh, shout out presented the board with the old bosses and the mayor read those bosses to Marvin, Carolyn, and Lloyd. I'll repeat it after him, and all the members signed. That was something kind of new this year to be doing on an annual basis or not, which is something that will be every year. Okay. Uh, okay. And, and Tina had a request that uh, probably should have been addressed years ago, uh, but she brought it up, and luckily, uh, that's going on to what happens if there's a death or a divorce, and who pays the meter deposit, and who does not pay the meter deposit. Margaret made a motion that if there is a death, then no deposit should be taken when the surviving spouse switches the account into their name. If the account wasn't already in both names with a second from Lloyd and the third from Lloyd. And that's something that probably should have been addressed years ago that nobody, a bridge nobody crossed. Okay, uh, shot to introduce Sharon Rock as the new full-time utility clerk at the water office. Sharon started on January 28th. And uh, Derek told the board that there was nobody taking vacations in the month of February. You're all shocked. Yeah. And, uh, and any <coughs> Go ahead. Okay. You've got some further information regarding that situation with my county talking to Nexco folks. Yes. Right. Yeah. Was that helpful? Did she come back and help you out? Yeah, Tina made some notes and communicated those to Attorney Perkins so that he can continue um, his research and get back to us. How's the new hire working out? Oh. Really well. Good. Mm -hmm. Glad to hear that. She hasn't ran out the door screaming with her hair on fire yet, so good. that's a good thing. <laughs> she's been in public service a while, so she's probably she used has. to it. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's, you know, the utility office is one of those that it's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure, because it is a busy office and we've got sure. a lot. A lot going on, a lot of things that you have to learn. Um, I mean, it isn't just a matter of sitting and collecting a, a check every so often. There's a lot more to it. So, but no, she's doing really well. And very personable. I mean, she's doing well in public. Bust the mayor's chops. I was going to say, don't be the door. Bust the mayor's chops. How have we been here? Really well done. Yeah. <laughs> <Good. laughs> okay, um, we don't have any ADA concerns. Uh, any legal issues you want to throw out of any? It's not oh, just, uh, I, I did talk with uh, uh, Chief Shots earlier today. Uh, the state of Indiana had a uh, Supreme Court issue come back on the issue of civil forfeiture. I don't know if you caught that. Uh, essentially, I think it happened. To it, uh, there was a gentleman who was uh, uh, arrested for uh, dealing, and uh, I don't remember 
which charge he had, but at a maximum fine of ten thousand dollars. And they seized a, uh, a, a the seizure happens kind of a separate proceeding. So the state of Indiana filed a complaint to to legitimize the, the, the seizure of uh, uh, forty two thousand uh, dollars land rover land. Yeah. And uh, the trial court said that it's, that's far in excess of the fine. It's not really appropriate. Court of appeals said that's not really appropriate. And the Indiana Supreme Court looked at it and said, uh, we don't think that part of the Eighth Amendment has ever been applied to the states. Uh, and so we don't, it seems like that's, they're using a federal standard to kick this out. And it went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said, no, nah, I think there's enough, eh, enough past case law and, and historical evidence that the Eighth Amendment, this part of the Eighth Amendment was intended to apply to, to the states. And so they reversed it. And uh, what, from what the chief tells me, the only civil forfeitures that the city's been involved in has been through the DEA. And so the DEA kind of takes the lead on that. So we kind of talked about that. I, I, I suggested he might keep an eye out for maybe the DEA bringing, bringing down some revision of some of its policies uh, in light of that decision. But it's kind of an interesting look because it's a, a, a <coughs> decision. But, so nothing other than, other than that. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Those in favor? Amen.